Hi, welcome to another Cigar Advisor Master Blenders podcast. I'm Gary Korb, Executive Editor for CigarAdvisor.com, and today we have a very special guest, Rainier Lorenzo. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Rainier. Right. He's the president and founder of HVC Cigars. I'm happy to be smoking an HVC Cerro Maduro. Thank you very much. Thank you for having um, me here. They make the Cerro, obviously, the Pan Caliente, La Rosa 520, uh, the Serie A, which we did on... Uh, uh, our weekly show, Hashtag Now Smoking, a few weeks ago. And uh, we've had the opportunity to meet a couple times, right? But now we're really going to try to get to know each other. And um, so, Rainier, welcome to Master Blenders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. We're Thank both left-handed, so we have to <laughs> <laughs> And um, I really appreciate you taking the time to come out here. You're dressed up. With nice. I wore a sport jacket. A sport jacket. Like, you know, a little classy. You know, few ones we... Classy guys, you know? <laughs> We're a couple of wild and crazy guys, yeah? <laughs> anyway, I always ask this to people I've met, um, you know, for the first time on the show, and <clears throat> what, what was the first cigar you ever smoked, and what do you remember I mean, about really, it? like, when you're talking my first, first cigars, mm -hmm. I remember in Cuba and my family farm, not tobacco farm, right? My family farm is in the middle of Cuba. Oh, okay. It's called Camaway. It's uh, one of the bigger, it's the same like here, like Texas. Okay. It's more for cattles and rice. Oh, so okay. my uncles and cousins are smoking cigars, but not really the, uh, not the premium cigars, mm -hmm. like the cheapest cigars they sell in the bodegas. Okay. In Cuba, like they cost, a, a me uh, five cents. Mm -hmm. They get bundles <laughs> for like a dollar. Right. So they, I remember a couple of times working with them in the farm on Keeper Path, mm -hmm. but my first, Real, real premium cigar. I remember I was, by the time I was living in Havana already. Mm -hmm. You know, I born and come away and I grew up in Havana. Right. Yeah, and probably I was too. like 18, 19 years old. I was in a party with my family mm -hmm. and a guy was passing out cigars. Okay. And I give you one and that was a Cueva Siglo VI. Ooh. And I remember I was talking to the guy next to me and I said, you know what? I never really was pay attention to us, but this have something that really like it. <laughs> yeah. And actually, today that's my favorite Cuban cigar. Really? The Cueva Siglo Six. Oh. That was the first I remember. Mm -hmm. All right. And how old were you then? Do you remember? But I was like 18, 19. Yeah, so, so I like had people, they were like 11 years old. They tried to first get out. They stole it from their grandfather or their uncle. Yeah, yeah. some people have, no, because some people that are a lot in the families. Mm -hmm. That's not my case. Yeah. So. All right. Well, um, you know, I want to talk about the fact that you were, you were born and raised in Cuba. Yes. Because we don't really meet a lot of people who, who've lived in Cuba. We meet people who escaped from Cuba or they were left there, they're older. They left there with, you know, right after the revolution, 59, 60. Um, so I wanted to know, um, wh what is it like to grow up in Cuba? I mean, you know, what, what, what's, you know? That's a really good question. I mean, you grew up with a lot of freedom, but at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, we are really family-oriented people. Mm -hmm. When I say you grew up with freedom, you are really, I mean, I was the really happy kids growing up there. Mm -hmm playing in the streets right. around with my friends. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you are in a room that you cannot go out. Mm -hmm. You know, I left Cuba when I was 23 years old. Right. And when you are in Cuba, as mm -hmm. a Cuban person, you think you know everything. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but when you go out of Cuba, uh -huh. you say, wow, this is not what I, mm -hmm. I was expecting, right? Right. Think about my... My brother and my sister, they both were doctors. My mom was a principal at school mm -hmm. for almost 40 years. Okay. Wow. And we did not really struggle at all. We were like medium class. Okay. Living family in Havana. Mm -hmm. But you want more freedom. Right. The opportunity that I have now here in this country, mm -hmm. like start my own business, right. getting out there, work hard, uh -huh. uh, you cannot do that in Cuba. 
Really? It's the important thing. Yeah. And and when you came here, like when you went to, when the first time you went to a supermarket, were you like blown away by the, the selection? I mean, you say, wow, like <laughs> you don't see that stuff in Cuba at all. It's amazing, you know, it's, it? it's like you say, wow, I mean, everything. I know. It's, yeah, I, everything. I, I, I walk in the supermarket, you know, and I, I look at all the cereals. I look at all the different soups and the, you know, the, the brands. And it's just like, I say, you know, and the people in other countries, they don't, they don't have, they must be like amazed, you know. And, and then the, the only choice. thing like you always like, you have to know that it's something way better mm -hmm. out there. Right. Right. So, and I feel lucky just to live at the early, I mean, like 23 years old. Mm hmm and start to see different things. Wow. And, and uh, you've, you've done very well since you've been here, like a, a lot of uh, expatriates. Um, let's talk about cigars. Um, what, what do you look for in a good cigar? And, and how does that factor into the way you blend your cigars? I mean, it's like most, I mean, to me, the cigar are looking for four things. Okay. Construction, right. flavor, right. balance, and clean finish. Ah. Okay. When I say clean finish, it's like you puff, and I don't want to feel any bad taste in my oh, mouth. Something nice that I can come back to the cigar and say, wow, I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is balance. If, yes. you see, if you see in my whole portfolio, I don't have really, really a full, full, full body cigar. All I do is medium, medium full, because mm -hmm. that, that's my palate. Okay. That's kind of like mine. I, yeah. I, I, you have to respect everybody's palate. Right. So, and sometimes I sing a wrong when I say I don't blame for people. I say this every time when I am around right. talking to people there with cigars and every shop, like I, I blame for myself. Right, well, mo I found that most blenders do. And then when they when they try to blend for other people, they don't, it, it's not really the same and they don't, really don't make it. It's, the, it's gotta, like, exactly, you gotta bring like, you, I think it's a connection that you have with your body mm -hmm. when you're talking about a smoke. And today, you look at Nicaragua, what it's been doing for the last 15, 20 years. It's doing I know, it's unbelievable I know. things right now. Now, since you brought it up, I have to say, and I don't, I, I don't think I've had the Cerro in the Maduro uh, since my first time. It, it does have a very clean finish. It's like, you know, uh, there's, there's something there, but it's not like, you know, it's not spicy. It's not, it's just It's smooth, clean. a lot yeah, of sweetness. Smooth. And it is, it is sweet, and I like sweet cigars. I like them like on the sweeter side. I do, it's like, remember, when you, when you smoke a Cuban cigar, a really good Cuban cigar, mm -hmm. Cuban cigar, usually they don't have really, really heavy style. They are the most creamy and sweet. Yeah, I, I've found that too, and I don't smoke a lot of Cubans, because I don't buy a lot of Cubans. They're, usually they're given to me, or someone will bring some back. We and, are in this, yeah. You know, but, at, but the ones that I've had, and I've, um, have been very, very creamy, very sweet, very, very floral. They have that floral thing. Mm -hmm. And I haven't found too many Nicaraguan cigars that have been able to um, capture that, that floral note that you get out of the Cuban cigars. But, you know, and on the same time, you don't really want it. You don't want it. I mean, let Cuba make their cigars. Let the Nicaraguans make their cigars. You know, I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. Um, someone told me you worked for a genetics company in Wisconsin. Yes. Um, how did that was quite a chat, remember? Uh, when I left Cuba. Uh, August 2008, uh -huh. and I moved to Wisconsin okay. December of 2008. How you end up in Wisconsin? <laughs> <laughs> I started working for this genetics company for mm -hmm. almost seven years because I have a veterinarian background back in Cuba. Okay. So I started working for this company for almost seven years and I started HVC back in 2011. Okay. Right? And I was doing both. Right. And my free time, I get out to the Chicago market it's oh, a great market for cigars in my time off, mm -hmm. driving out there, meeting people, busy in the shops. Mm -hmm. Every, and four years ago, I said, you know what, this is what I want to do, and I start doing it full time. Wow, so that's how you transitioned. I mean, did you, you went to Nicaragua, I assume? And how no, I happen? remember my family has been working in tobacco for almost 18 years. We have another salif. Okay. So my sister, she's the general manager of Tropical Tobacco down there in Miami. Mm -hmm. So in 2009, Eduardo Fernandez, the owner of Aganor also invited me to go to Nicaragua. Okay. And he showed me all the process of the tobacco. Uh -huh. And, and that's really how I fell in love with. Mm -hmm. And they give me opportunity to say, hey, you know, I have great relationship with them and say, we almost mm -hmm. like a family. And he say, hey, you know, whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. just come down here and do your things. Right. They give me that green light 
to go and move forward and do things. I mean, when you have the opportunity, when you work with great tobacco, mm -hmm. remember, they are one of the biggest growing of tobacco down there. I know. There's a, and and so, everybody seems to love their tobacco. I and mean, a lot of people are they, using it, and it's just... It's great. It's phenomenal. It's great. Yeah. I like it a lot, too, and I smoke so a lot of So it's like something like, you say, whoa, this is an opportunity that you have, and why said, not? I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm going to give not? it a shot, you right? Know? So it's very entrepreneurial. Yeah. You know? So, um, so let, let's all, all right, so... For someone who's never had an HVC cigar, um, how, how would you describe them? I guess you kind of described it before when you said you, what you like in a cigar, but... but if, if somebody say, well, what would you recommend? Mm -hmm. I say, well, why you don't try the HVC Cero Corojo 99 wrapper? It's a cigar that you can smoke any time of the day. Mm -hmm. It's not really strong. It's a nice medium body cigar with a lot of sweetness. 100% mm -hmm. Nicaraguan Puro. Mm. It's a Corojo 99 wrapper from the Jalapa yeah, region, good, it's good my tobacco. favorite region yeah. of Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. So I like Esteli because Esteli is different. Esteli brings you a lot of pepper, a spicy, a little strong. Jalapa is more medium, right. more mellow, sweetness as well. Mm -hmm. So if somebody would say, what do you recommend from HVC to, you know, I, I don't know HVC well. Can we start with, I say, well, try this. Okay. Try the HVC Cerro Corojo 99 and you will see any time of the day I see you will really enjoy that cigar. All right. You know, it's a unique flavor. Well, that's a good, so it's a good starter cigar for someone who wants to discover what the your company's yeah. all about. Um, let me ask you a question about the blending process. Is there something about the blending process um, that many people don't know about that maybe you want to tell us about? Is it something, something that you encounter or something, a, a method that you apply or a way that you go about uh, I mean, it's like cigars. It, you, you gotta try and you gotta smoke everything. Right. When I say this, you have to smoke each component every time you wanna do a blend. Right. Why? Because for me, it's like, I, I love to cook. Oh, okay. So to me, it's like you go to a good restaurant because you know the dish is good, mm -hmm. and every time you go, they are consistent. So what does that mean? When you smoke each component, you know how the ferment process you, you gotta find something that really satisfies your palate. Mm -hmm. You know, what is salty, what is sweetness, what is, uh, I would like to say, dry. Mm -hmm. So when you combine them together, right. what are you looking for right there? And, do, do and the you, other mm -hmm. thing is you gotta try different regions. Right, and there are a lot of because them. Because different around. regions, they got different taste profile. Think about one thing people sometimes don't realize. Fermentation is not to give flavor. The flavor is already in the soil. That's right? very interesting. I will give you three cigars. Mm -hmm. One from Cuba, right. one from Nicaragua, and one from Dominican Republic. Okay. The three main regions right. of premium cigar. Mm -hmm. If you know about cigars, you can taste the different right away of those cigars. Mm. And a simple one cent is because the soil it's completely different in these three different regions. And, but you know, a lot of people have been blending, you know, uh, Nicaragua with Dominican, you know, Nicaragua, and you know, I'm finding that there are more uh, Nicaraguan puros coming out now. And uh, you, you do you do uh, a lot of those. I know uh, uh, I mean, AJ about, Fernandez oh, has a lot of those too. All and, we do is like growing Corojo, mm -hmm. 99 and Criollo 98. That's the most aganosa leaf bro. Right now, what, what is it about those leaves that uh, I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about like, Remember, they are the most original seed from Cuba. Okay. They are really uh, uh, resistant to the blue mold. Right. The other thing, they have a unique flavor. Mm -hmm. When I say unique flavor, coro and corojo, you got sweetness, mm -hmm. you got mellow. I get it. Right. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the criollo, you got sweetness too, but it's a little more up. Okay. Little when I say a little more up, I say more little in more the body. Full, full, more, fla more full flavor. More full flavor. Though. Okay. All right. That's cool. I, um, so what I want to do is, uh, for those who don't know anything about your cigars, um, or those who do, who may not have tried something uh, that you, you, you do, um, I, I want to do what we call our little lightning round, where I'm just going to name the uh, cigar, and if you just give us a sentence or two about that cigar. So uh, the Cerro Natural, which I think you're smoking, All right? So what is it what what is it what is it about that cigar as opposed to say the Cerro Maduro that besides the wrapper I mean we know the wrapper I mean besides the wrapper inside the cigar is uh, is the same okay 
You know, you got to do a letter just, just to find out, but think about it. And this, the only different here, you use San Andres Maduro rapper mm -hmm. from the Valley of Mexico. Mm -hmm. The cigar bring a little more on the medium food profile, mm -hmm. a lot of more sweetness. Right. So in the Corojo 99 rapper, as I would like to say, medium plus. Okay. You got sweetness as well, but a different kind of sweetness. Mm -hmm. When I say different kind of sweetness, because the Corojo 99 rapper, there's not the same sweetness that you have right. with the San Andres Maduro rapper. Yeah, this is more of a, you know, like a, I always found San Andreas, when it's done right, to be more of a sugary sweetness mm -hmm. than uh, Corojo 99, which is more, um, maybe it's more like a, like a bitter sweetness, like a dark chocolate kind of sweetness. Okay, you know, yeah. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. sugar sweet, it's, 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 it's that's sweet, but it's not, you know, uh, it doesn't have the same type of sweetness. As, as this, it's not it's not as sweet, I guess is what I'm oh, saying, but, but yeah, it's still yeah. sweet. Um, then we have the Edicion Especial 2015. What tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, actually, that one we use tobacco only from two farms. Okay. A special edition 2015 is because we use one farm from Jalapa. Okay. And the other farm from Esteli, over San Andres Maduro wrapper, medium full body cigar. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of our best selling cigar in our portfolio. Right. We a lot, a lot of sweetness. Mm. I like when I blend my cigars, they all have to be sweetness. Uh -huh. cigar. I'm talking about natural sweetness. Right. So that's something really unique mm -hmm. in HVC portfolio. Okay. I'll have to go back to that one because I, I did have that one when, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, then there was the 2018. And what's... With the, the same farms that we're talking about, the 2015 mm -hmm. over Corojo 99 wrapper. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. All right. So there you go. And do you usually start with the wrapper? Like a lot of blenders say, here's the wrapper, and now I'm gonna no, work not around really. that. No. no, I start with the flavor. Really? Yeah, I start with the flavor. Very interesting. Because like I say, usually I always looking for, think about it, I've been in the business for almost 10 years, and when you see my portfolio is not really big. No, and I like that. <laughs> I do. When I, I say it's like, not really big, I don't have. Yeah. You don't have like a million cigars. You know, like, it's sad, you know. You know? Yeah. It's like every time I want to make sure mm -hmm. I put a cigar out there, it has to be completely different from what I have already in my portfolio. Right. And w what it translates to that, it's like every time I have to smoke, I really have to feel that different. And I made sure every I smoke a HVC. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can switch back to that one, mm -hmm. and I can say it's a different cigar. Right. And flavor. Mm -hmm. Because so that's the most important thing to me in a cigar. It's flavor. Absolutely. And the cigar has no flavor. Absolutely. I had a cigar the I other day. I thought it was going to be really tasty, and it was flat. It just was flat, you know. I said, eh, you know, <laughs> I didn't make it. Um, now, now a lot of people like Broadleaf, and you have a first selection Broadleaf limited edition. What, tell us about that. because uh, I mean, I remember that was last year at the show, the IPCPR, mm -hmm. PCA right now. Yeah. We the just, you know, I say, oh, I want to do a Broadleaf. Mm -hmm. Because broad leaf here from Connecticut, that quite a unique flavor mm -hmm. that you cannot compare in any other rappers yeah. out there in the world. And with the 500 bucks, it's exclusive for the show. And that was all out at the show. And after that, people start coming and say, Lorenzo, we need that cigar back in the market. A lot of people ask me. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. broad leaf is very popular. And I say, well, let me. Let me bring back the Broadleaf mm -hmm. for regular production cigar, and we did this year. That's great. So talking about only two sides, I'm not gonna come out with right. any more sides for now. You know, Broadleaf is really mm -hmm. hard right now. And like I say, Broadleaf has that unique flavor. They really like it. And the other thing is, like, it's not really a really a full, full body cigar, even a Broadleaf, because mm -hmm. most of the Broadleaf out there are full, full, full body. Yeah. HBC First Selection Broadleaf is a medium full body cigar sweetness, night balance, clean in your mouth. I, I don't, you know what, I don't know if I've had that one, so I'm gonna circle that, because <laughs> I'm gonna try it. Uh, then we have the, uh, this one I've had, is excellent, the La Rosa 520 Maduro. The La Rosa 520 Maduro. That's a nice thing, a lot of people ask for that. But the La Rosa 520 actually, you know HBC at 10 for Havana City? Mm -hmm. Everything I do is inspire me where I'm from. Right. So the La Rosa 520, that was my address in Cuba and Havana. Oh, okay. And that to me is more than a cigar for me. When I say that, it's, it's personal. It's, it's personal to yeah. me. 
I smoke some time La Rosa and just almost every time try to slide me to my home. Wow. Growing up there. That's great. I definitely have to have another one of those. Um, and most of the time, it's always has been limited edition cigar. So mm -hmm. this year was the only thing with the mm -hmm. only two sides with San Andres Maduro wrapper. Okay. So the before releases of La Rosa 520, always we use tobacco from Jalapa Ridge. We yeah. don't use any Esteli tobacco. They say that, that the tobacco in Jalapa, the region of the soil, is very similar to Pinar San del Rio. Juan, it's, San Juan and San Luis, yeah, yeah. the region. So do you, the, do you agree with that? Having been, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, and I, it's, when you see the soil in Esteli, mm -hmm. you walk around the farms, yeah. and you see it's really heavy, Yeah. It's sticky, huh. dark. Mm -hmm. That's why the tobacco from Esteli, you got pepper, really heavy, mm -hmm. you really, I have to take care when you blend a cigar with a lot of tobacco from Esteli. Right. Because in that blend for the balance, you can go really way up and you can miss the balance. You mm -hmm. know, you never had a cigar that always hit you, hit you, hit you. Yeah. And I got a kind of cigar, I say, you know what? I, I can, <laughs> and I enjoy it at all. Because, because every time I puff, always hit me really right. hard. I mean, some people like it, that's mm -hmm. okay they with do. me, but that, that, that's not my thing. Yeah, it's not my thing either. So, yeah. when I go with the, La Rosa 520, mm -hmm. more on the Jalapa. At the same time, I want to bring up a little more up in flavor. We use only Biso and Seco. Right. Never mm -hmm. been a So those are mid, mid priming tobaccos. Yes. Right? Yeah. And we usually, the, the Biso that I use mm -hmm. for La Rosa, I usually work a little more darker in the side. So usually, you say like priming for Biso. And I use, they use Biso for binder a lot too, don't they? Um, for the binder, they use the viso. Not really. No. What do they use? What do you use for binder usually? Is it mid, it's not mid priming. It's no. It think about <laughs> no. Think about for when you say like viso in that size, mm -hmm. usually seco. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then we have the uh, Serie A, which I had a couple weeks ago, and uh, I really like that cigar. Hit me pretty hard afterwards because we smoked it early in the morning. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about the Serie A, because I think some guys are raving about it here. And, uh, the Serie like A is like, the first time with the Serie A was exclusive for a guy mm -hmm. in Hawaii, a retail they have there, it's called Rye Wine Field, okay. Marvin. And he said, well, I want to bring me something different. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let me bring a cigar that will enjoy it. But when I did it, it was really good. I told him, hey, I will give you this exclusive size just for you. Right. At the show, I will release another sizes. And with that, something that I never done before, all the tobacco that we use is classification A. Mm -hmm. And another salif classification the tobacco in A, B, and C. We okay. always mix and right. no blends, right? And the Serie A of the tobacco is class A. Right, which is the highest. Class, I mean, right? I mean, I mean, you you can you can say it's a high, but it doesn't mean like you can say because you, when, when you mix, mm -hmm. right? Because A is the classification when you look the tobacco. I see. And you can see for the size, you can see for the texture when you I feel it in your it. hands, okay. right. right? You say right. this is class A, this is class mm -hmm. B. So, but you can mix the tobaccos and we A, B, and C, and they work. Sure. You got a really good blender. So for the Serie A, I went all A. Mm -hmm. In top of that, we use a half leaf of Maduro, Ligero. Ooh, that's Inside. what gives it its little... That's why when they give you that little <laughs> papaya, the most people say, wow. Yeah. You know, actually, I got a, some people text me in the post and, and say, oh, I really enjoy the cigar, but mm. that cigar give me a little... Really? Hip hop. I say, yeah, well, because that's... Me too. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the leaf of Maduro, Ligero. Really? That we yeah, use just a half a leaf of Ligero? Half leaf of Maduro, Maduro Ligero. Ligero, wow. That's unbelievable. Then you have the um, pan caliente, mm -hmm. which I found to be kind of peppery. That was a little too peppery, spicy for me, but I, I don't know, maybe it was just that particular cigar. Um, tell us about that a little bit. I think the pan caliente is a, you know, actually, pan caliente is a really popular slam in Cuba. Mm. When uh, whatever produce sell like fast, you say that sells mm -hmm. like pan caliente, like hot capes. Yeah, because pan is bread, so, right? Yes, pan mm -hmm. is bread. And it's a nice medium body cigar. Like you say, for you, was a little peppery. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. 
We use most of the tobacco there from Esteli region. Oh, okay. We use that makes Criollo sense. 98 wrapper okay. over. So you got a lot of sweetness into it. Mm -hmm. But like you say, mate, because we use a lot of more, a little Esteli there that you feel that peppery for you. We only have the cigar in city size. Right. So great price point. That's why. Yeah, it is very affordable. Pa caliente, that's, that's yeah. a good thing. And, uh, well, most of your cigars are pretty affordable. I, I don't think they have anything that's, like, outrageously expensive. No, which is not also really, good. no. No? I don't know. You usually, I mean, and we have every year we do a really cool project. It's called the Black Friday. The what? Black Friday. Okay, Black Friday. Yes, the wow. Black Friday. So every year we, we do just a limited edition cigar exclusive for Black Friday. Super, super premium cigar. We are really affordable price. Hmm. It, I don't know. I, you know, you got something like some want to get out with. That's, that's not my thing. I want to mm -hmm. give right. the farms or the consumers mm -hmm. something special with really good price point. I agree, and uh, you know, otherwise um, they're just not going to buy it. I mean, you know, you have to. It has to be affordable, and if it's really good. <laughs> that makes no. it even better, so. I mean, that uh, happened to me. Sometimes I got some expensive smoke and I don't enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I got some expensive wine. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Do you like wine? Your wine I guy? do. You like yeah. wine with a cigar ever? Uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, all right, finally, we have the San Isidro. The San Isidro. Tell me about that a little bit. Actually, that's a nice story back in Cuba with San Isidro. Okay. San Isidro, you know, back in... In the 40s and the mm -hmm. 50s, was a really famous pimp bar mm -hmm. in Cuba, Jarini. Yeah. Where people in Cuba know him a lot. Uh -huh. It's a really famous because he was rich guy doing big business with U.S. government and mm -hmm. the Cuba government. Okay. And that where my inspiration came from, San Isidro. That's the only thing uh -huh. we do box press. Oh, okay. We a banner wrapper. First time we introduced in the market the banner wrapper, Ecuador a banner wrapper cafe. Mm -hmm. Medium for body cigar. Mm -hmm. And when I think in the flavor profile, most people not expecting half that in the Habano cigar. But they say, well, Habano sometimes have a little pepper. Yeah, that's true, it is a little stronger. Yeah. Not this one. This one has a medium full, but I don't feel the peppery. Now, is that because the way it's fermented? Um... I usually in the color of the rubber, because remember, we don't grow Habano color. We have to buy okay. the Habano color. Right. So I'm looking when the wrapper, I'm looking for more the color. I want it to be a little more up. I see. Not in the Maduro side, mm -hmm. but like we we talk, we say down there like cafe oscuro. Okay. It's not a Maduro, but it's no. coffee. Up, it's dark, but it's, it's dark, not, but it's not uh, like yeah. Right. And that gives you a lot of flavor on it in the wrapper. Okay. All right. So um, since your cigars are made with. Um, Aganorsa leaf tobaccos, mostly. Are they all Aganorsa? I mean, except for the stuff, you know, you I mean, from Mexico just, just, and Ecuador, Just obviously. a sec, the wrappers. Right. Binded it's, and fillers. It's all Aganorsa. It's all Aganorsa. Right. Uh, so, um, so what What would you say differentiates your blends? What makes them different than, say, the stuff that Max and Fernandez, uh, I mean, Max and uh, Fernando are doing? Um, I mean, it's like everybody's half a different palate. Right. It's like Dion does. It's like Melillo does. It's like Warpa does. Mm -hmm. It's like Aganosa Leaf does. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's unbelievable how many blanks you can do. I give you, I will give you this same amount of tobacco, all right? Mm -hmm. You got Biso, you got Seco, you got Ligero, mm -hmm. even Volado, that we never yeah. use in premium cigars, right? Okay. You can do a millions of blends with the same tobacco. Right. What does that mean? The portion on your use, uh -huh. right? right? You can put a little more of this. You can put a little less than that right. to get the flavor that mm -hmm. you really want it. Right. I don't. I think a lot of people who smoke cigars uh, don't understand that. They think it's all um, like one leaf. It goes in there. It's long, and they don't get it that it's sometimes just a piece mm -hmm. of a of tobacco, Remember, right? a piece of something else. And you know, um, even though it's called long filler, it's still you know there's it's different it's portions like, of tobacco in there, of different tobaccos. It's like cooking. Yeah. Right? Right. For a cooking, you need a recipe. Mm -hmm. 
if you put a little more garlic or a little less onion, mm -hmm. you will get something. Exactly. Right? If you <laughs> right. put a little more of the other stuff, the flavor is going to bring up. Sure. So back to your question, mm -hmm. everybody has a different palate. Right. And I feel fortunate and lucky that the stuff that I blend, people really like it. Oh, I'll tell you, people I like, like this a lot. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is really good, by the way. I'm not just saying it because we're here. I mean, this is very tasty. It's, because it's, just, I use, it's like right in my wheelhouse. Yeah. I mean, this one I really enjoy. This Actually, my yeah. first cigar of the day, this one today, the HBC Cerro Corojo. Yeah, I mean, this I really is, enjoy it. The Cerro Maduro, it's, it's, it's really smooth. It's really balanced. It's got just the right amount of sweetness. You know, um, it's a little dry on the palate. Okay. That might just be, mm -hmm. you know, a morning thing. But um, I really like it. And I'm, uh, I'm smoking it pretty fast. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, well, I'm, I'm curious about, um, you know, when you go you go around to a lot, the shops a lot. You know, you visit the, the retail stores. You were here um, a few a few weeks back, and um, when, when you're there, uh, what what have you learned from the people um, that you meet at these uh, these events? I mean, always you you want to share your passion. Mm -hmm. So you want to share what you do with the consumers out there to understand more or better what you do. Like you say, so I walk to a shop and people say, "Well, I never heard about you, bro." So huh. tell me about it. So, and you share stories with people. Mm -hmm. In the end of the day, it's not only about me. Right. It's all about the people out there. Sure. They want to know what they're smoking. Mm -hmm. They want to know the story behind the cigars. Mm -hmm. That's what drives you and to get no more the consumers. And the consumer want to know you. Mm -hmm. So, and that is, this is something like, I mean, I, I, I really, me personally, I don't smoke because I want to smoke. Mm -hmm. I want to smoke because I want to relax. I want right. to enjoy. Yeah. I want to talk to people. Even sometimes my best cigars I smoke myself. Mm -hmm. I talk yeah, to I myself. I smoke alone a lot. You know, I, I, I do that. I, yeah. I smoke by myself and then by jotting and just I talk to myself. <laughs> I play online and, over. <laughs> and I enjoy doing that. Yeah, Even I with know, my it's friends. great. So it's, a, it's, not like, it's not like cigarettes. No, and I'm really, I used you know, to my, I my smoke point, cigarettes many years ago. I just can't even stand the smell of a cigarette. Right I, I, I never, I never in my life I smoked a cigarette. Well, you're not missing anything. <laughs> I've been a cigar smoker now for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm 34 now. Right. And I start really, started getting when I was almost 24. Mm -hmm. Back here when I get here in Miami. Yeah. And I, I never have a cigarette before, but when I see the cigarette people are smoking out there, you see them smoking there for like five minutes. And you know the and other quicker, thing? And quicker, and that's it then. No. The thing about c cigarette smokers, they will smoke that cigarette anywhere, no matter what the weather is. I was driving my uh, son down to uh, college the other day. It was raining, and I saw someone. He was about to pass me with the window down, and they had the cigarette in there. <laughs> it's raining in the car. They don't care. They got to have that cigarette, you know. And that's what I like about cigars, as we were just talking about, is that, you know, you say I'm gonna, sm I w I'm really in the mood for this cigar. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna have coffee or bourbon, whatever you would like to have with it, you know, wine, and I'm just gonna enjoy the cigar for what it is, you know, and just relax. You know, the, the cigarette is just like, you know, just can't get into it. But uh, yeah, so it like but you know, we smoke cigars during the day here, you know, because we have to review them and things, and we have mm -hmm. to write about them. And and I think, um, and I tr I try to keep it to like maybe two cigars a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, because you know, to smoke all day long, first of all, my palate's not gonna be able to recognize anything after a while. And I just think it's better to just smoke and really try to relax and enjoy it, even at the office, which is a little more, because I'm working too, you know. But, um, but uh, I, 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 you know, I'll go home on the weekend and I'll just sit in my garage and just relax with a cigar. And that, that's the, the best thing, you know. Or my yeah. brother was here with his friends the other night at, at Leap Cigar Bar and we just sat around and smoked and enjoyed and, you know, it's you great. Know, that's funny, like you say, like sometimes you smoke one or two a day. Me sometimes that depend what move I am. Sure. Like when I am working with in shops out there, you smoke six, seven <laughs> cigars a day. <laughs> and per a week sometimes, like at least two week, two days, mm -hmm. I don't smoke. Yeah. No, it's good. Why? Because I want to keep my palate fresh. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I couldn't smoke for like five days a few weeks ago because I felt the cold coming on. And I just wanted to beat that out, you know. And I did. And then when I came back and I had my first cigar, it was like so good, you know. <laughs> it's it's like, different. Yeah. Yeah. So for for newer cigar smokers or 
someone who hasn't caught on to HVC, like as you said, you know, you'll go to an event, like, I never heard of your cigars, you know. So why should they smoke an HVC? Well, because I believe you will smoke something different mm -hmm. from the rest out there. And it's That's true. That's really why I can say why well, you say, well, what I have to smoke that well, because I really believe you will smoke something completely different. And cigar and smokers I want you to have that experience. Just try it. And 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 um, they love variety. Cigar smokers, they always are looking for something new. Do you think there are too many cigars on the market? It's, it's too much choice. Better good cigars and better bad cigars. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank it was you. Really terrific. Thank you so much. Renier Thank Lorenzo, founder you. and president of HBC. Please be sure to sign up for CigarAdvisor.com emails because you want to know what's happening on CigarAdvisor.com. Like us on Facebook and on our YouTube page where this video will be. Uh, you can watch this video and other CigarAdvisor.com videos. Make sure that you get uh, the notifications too from YouTube for us. And for Master Blenders, I'm Gary Korb. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time and happy smokes. Thank you guys.